Welcome to another edition of The Bones of Advertising. I'm Craig McLeod, and coming down the outside now, you've got John Douglas moves up on the inside of his putter, and the putter now on the inside. JD, how are you, my friend? I'm very well, very well, very well. I wish, yeah, I, was, yeah. I, wish I was able to say I'm fresh off the golf course, but I'm not. I'm just uh, fresh off the, uh, the amateur putting green that is my office at the moment. Oh, God, no. Imagine if we could be on the golf course again. Imagine that. Soon, not long. I got... Um, I got very excited this morning because the US Open's on. Oh, exactly. I'm surprised. I, I've got another screen next to me. I might get the old kale up and have it up. Although, yeah. is it finished? No, it's not finished yet, is it? No, well, it's only the first day, but it's... Um, only just finished. the day, the round. Is the round done yet or not? No, it was washed out. Or well, not washed oh. out, but it was... Uh, they went too long. There's a surprise. Professional golf taking too long. Well, to that end, I'm, I'm feeling there's a little bit of energy in the room, particularly with the opening race call. But have you got a bone for us to pick over today? Yes. Yes. Coming down the outside. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a hot favourite. It's a hot favourite of mine. Um, yeah. Let's talk about sport. Let's talk oh. about advertising in sport. Let's talk oh. about sponsorships. Let's talk about sport people endorsing products that they have no business endorsing. Let's talk about, let's talk about the rampant commercialism <laughs> that advertising endorsements in sport has become. Let's talk about that. Let's pick over that by It's a small one. <laughs> okay, well, I better put the seatbelt on for that one because there's a hell of a lot to get through there, JD, my boy. Yeah, yeah. Where, where should and we start? Let's maybe start with, with endorsement. Let, let's talk about when a player of some sport, whatever sport that is, yep. decides to connect themselves to a brand, I mean, yep. there's some brilliant examples. I mean, you know, one of my faves, which you well know, is Jordan deciding yep. early doors that he was Adidas all the way. Then all of a sudden, he's headed out to Oregon to meet the team and he's walked away with, uh, you know, probably the most iconic brand in sport, you know, yep. Air Jordan. So yep. I, I believe... The endorsement by an athlete and the right athlete for a particular product can have an enormous effect on its success. Agree? Oh, oh absolutely. I don't think Nike would be Nike. No, it, well, it wouldn't, would it? But Michael Jordan, like he, he changed the face of uh, he changed the face of sport because he was. I mean, and have you seen? You've seen that? You've seen the the, oh. the movie, the whatever it is, you know? Exactly. Final the Last Dance, Dance, my friend. Yeah, the, the Netflix one. Brilliant. Yeah. The quote that I love of his, which um, sums up his entire uh, attitude, was they say there's no I in team, but there's an I in win. Yes. <laughs> you know? Very true. And I would, um, uh, I've always been a fan of Luke Longley's. I've always thought he has treated, the, I think he's treated the world with a certain amount of grace and a certain amount, like he's, a, he's approached it with a certain amount of respect. Yep. And the fact, that, the fact that he and Michael Jordan didn't see eye to eye necessarily, yep. we don't know because we haven't heard Luke's side of the story, um, uh, seems to say a lot more about Michael Jordan. <laughs> than it does about Luke Longley. It <laughs> was revealed. But anyway, we're getting off the point. Like, and then they tried, Nike famously tried to figure out who was going to be the next yes. Michael Jordan. And they searched and they searched and they tried this and they tried it and nothing was there. And where did they find the next Michael Jordan? Here. Let me give you a hint. Yeah, Tiger Woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like, and they signed him up and again, and Nike was able to move into a brand new market. Like they did, they did, you know, sports gear. They did shoes. They started making their own golf balls. They started making their own golf clubs. Like, it's just an excuse to print money, but we're getting off the point. Yeah, absolutely. Like a Definitely. great endorsement. Like it's those, um, and they're very careful these days to do um, uh, sports endorsements when they're, um, uh, and they make sure they're aligned. So yes. you've got uh, the Wallabies being um, eating wheat bit. Like how many, how many do you do? You know, that whole like breakfast cereals and Uncle Toby's and the Uncle Toby's Iron Man and, and all of that. Yep. But back in the day, when Benson and Hedges sponsored the cricket. Yes, the Benson and Hedges. What was it? The Day Nighters or was it the... Yeah. Oh, was, was, no, they had the Benson and Hedges tests. 
Yes, the bedding exists as well. Wow. Back when um, back when Marlborough used to used to sponsor the Formula One, which one did the McLaren? Yeah, from, no, well, it was yeah, it was um, Ferrari or it was Ayrton no, Senna had it on his car. It was so yeah. that would have been not McLaren. Um, Whoever, I can't remember. Whoever. Yeah. The Mercedes, like they had a John Player special. Yeah, the JPS. Now, there, there was a magnificent cigarette and an even better car. Um, but. <laughs> They had no business. Cigarettes, and I smoked. I, I've you did. You loved the you loved the gaspers. Massive I, on them for a while. I used to smoke for Australia. That was yes. um, if there was an Olympic sport, I would have been straight through to the semis without dropping a set. I think you're um, as good at smoking as you are at golf, my boy. Oh, well, that's a uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's either a it's either a compliment from a golf or a compliment from a smoking. I can't quite tell which. Anyway. <laughs> Anyone who plays off nine in my book plays golf really, really well and probably deserve it of a sponsorship. Maybe not by Benson and Hedges, but maybe Callaway or someone else. Now, here you go. Let me, let, let me open up this little can of worms. So one of the big issues I uh, am finding at the moment, they've got, this, um, they've got this thing in golf where they allow gambling. Yes. So in any sport where they allow gambling, there has to be an incredible amount of governance over the sport and there needs to be repercussions for people who cheat. Right. And I'm using the C word very, very particularly because, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be called a cheat in any sport, but you particularly don't want to be called a cheat in golf. But Not in cricket, point. by the way. No. Not we're saying anything about anyone who was caught cheating with a little bit of sandpaper or something in their sport. But again, was that all on the back of gambling in sport? I think it, I think there is, no, I think the Australian sandpaper gate was a, um, was an obsession with winning. Yep. Um, and I, I think that boils, comes back down to when they lost in Tasmania to uh, South Africa, and the Australian cricket team was at an all-time low. And senior members of the of the of the Australian cricket organisation, not the team, the organisation itself, apparently, all reports came into the change room and said, "Your job is to win cricket games for Australia." Allegedly. Allegedly. Thank you very much. You just you just saved my ass from jail. Um, Thank you. Allegedly. And, and as a result of that, allegedly, there became, there was this, there's became this overly focused approach to winning at, at all costs. And Australians have always been very good at, at applying themselves to winning, but it became more and more apparent, like we're going to do this at any cost. And, you know, people have been saying that teams all around the world have been cheating for a long, long time. And I, I don't know. I'm not part of that. But... Tour de France. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you can't race in the Tour de France. Like, yeah. seriously, that, yeah. that is allegedly a sport that is rife with cheating. Allegedly. Yeah. But you can't... Like, but the, but the, as soon as you introduce gambling into anything like that, there is this sense of... Uh, as, me, as a gambler, I'm putting my hard-earned... Five bucks, ten bucks, five hundred, whatever your whatever your you know your limit is, yep. on someone. I expect there to be a sense of a level playing field. Yep. You can't have people bending the rules because there's going to be people putting far too much money on the outcome who are going to sue the governing bodies because they're not governing the sport correctly. I think. That feels to me like a can of worms, bud. Massive, huge. I love, I love a can of worms. I love the I love the trouble you go to trying to get them all back in the can. Yeah, it's like the genie. Once she's out of the bottle, my boy, very yeah. difficult to stuff her back in. Indeed, indeed, indeed. But you know, I like the I like the idea of like like I think it's important for um, I think it's a really easy thing for some products to get involved with sport. So you, ever, you know. I agree. And if we look at it from another point of view, if we, if we take another bent on it, 
thinking about the MCG, I'm a big footy fan and I'll go to the G with my son and my best mate and, and his son sometimes, but we'll turn up to the MCG and there's a bunch of these screens around the ground and, you know, a whole host of different sort of primarily bloke-based advertising comes up along these screens. And I guess, JD, my question to you is effectiveness of that type of advertising. Captive audience, Collingwood, Essendon, Anzac Day, 100,000 people at the G. Yeah. What, what's, what's the likelihood of a message in that environment having an effect on a, on, on a consumer? So, uh, it goes back to two things. I think it goes back to uh, awareness. Like, you, like you, 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 if people don't know you, they, don't, they can't buy you. So um, that, will be, that will be a big part of it, making sure people are aware of you. The other thing I think is, um, is it relevant? So when you have, uh, I think, lad brokes, for, for, for blokes, anyone, but, I mean, as you say, it's mainly aimed at blokes. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. So... Anyone who likes a punt on anything, when you're sitting there at three quarter time or you know half time or whatever, and you're going through your phone and you're thinking, I'll just have, I'll just put five bucks on who's going to kick the first goal next time because it's just a harmless bit of fun. I think to have the, I think to have the Ladbrokes buddy ad going around and around and around is just an easy way of reminding people that yep, you can have a, you can have a bet. So I think it's very effective for those people. Yep. Um, is it effective for four and 20 pies or is it effective for, you know, law firms? I don't know, unless you, unless you're kind of there and you want to, and you need a law firm. And I think, I think it's kind of good for four and 20, but as soon as you get down into the, into the emporium of food, you know, the, you, you're fighting a losing battle against the hot, you know, chicken salt chips and the, and the <laughs> burgers and the, you know, the beer and the door and the, you know, I tend to agree with you. I think that it has to be part of an integrated approach and I see it just as another outdoor vehicle. If you've got a captive audience of 90,000 people, on the way to the footy, they're listening to the radio. If there's a radio ad that occurs on your commute to, to the footy, you hear the radio ad, you turn up to the footy, you're sitting there and you see the ad around the boundary. You know, it's running around and, and boom, there's another cue and you're picking up another, you know, um, level of frequency so they're seeing it more on the way home on the radio again they get home they watch the replay remember when there was a replay by the way how good was the replay but they get I'm home only on replays don't tell them <laughs> and they stick, stick the tv on and they see the ad again i think it's got to be this integrated approach to trying to get a message out there to build the number of times someone sees the message because your favorite point jd no one sees it you're not relevant if, if, if you you can't be relevant unless someone's actually seeing it you know someone's actually got to have the understanding of that entire approach to get the message to you over a period of time to yep. ensure that it can have an impact on you and then ultimately put you in a position where you're going to consider the brand, if it's a positive consideration, hopefully by the brand. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. When you look at Qantas and the Wallabies, like that whole Israel Al kerfuffle. Yes. You know, that the do does the does Qantas stop sponsoring the wallabies because he's made some comments that are quite unsavory to large parts of the community or do we accept the fact that he is you know one of the most talented rugby players and we'll keep sponsoring him because without him there we won't win well you know the famous case of uh, whoever it was that lost the um tac.05 advertising was it collingwood because of the drink drive it was collingwood it was getting I'm going to bone to pick with you about that, but let's just, we'll move on from here. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that, that is another one, for example. And then the other thought I was going to have from a, a team perspective, we have all sorts of sponsorship on Team Guernsey's. What do you think of that? So you've got, you know, the Swans with VW, you've got, you know, insurance with Collingwood, or they've been over the past, in the past, you had that M&M's thing with the blues when they had the blue M&M, like there's all these different things. Do you reckon the team sponsorship is a good idea or a waste of time or is it exactly the same as what we're talking about with the banner the advertising around the ring of the ground? I think it goes back to media and, you know, you are, uh, you're, you're, um, you're much closer to the media end of things than, than I am. But I think it's, if it's, if the idea is to get someone noticed, get your brand noticed, and more people are going to be looking at Jordan Degoe's shorts, and they're going to be looking at the at a 
at a banner that they can't see on television, yeah, right. I'd buy Jordan to go his shorts. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I reckon like, you're on the money, mate. And, and I'm a big fan. I think, you know, like VW with the Swans, they must have wanted to have a big push into Sydney with the car to sponsor a particular team up there. And I mean, Sydney's the really, at the moment, the only show in town. You've got GWS, but they're kind of not at the same level as Sydney. So therefore you have them connecting their brand there and with the view that hopefully everyone looking goes, okay, well, if it's a tradie market, then they're probably after the Amarok. You know, that's the car that they're trying to push in that market. Yep. Or maybe they're looking at, you know, whether it's the new four wheel drive that they've got out there. But going back to the original point, I mean, I, I know MG's a sponsor of, of basketball. I know basketball's kind of been a bit flattened by this COVID thing. But again, I think really smart way to get their brand out amongst you know mums and dads because basketball is traditionally a family sport lots of families turn up to it i mean so is afl not saying it's not at all but really clever play probably you know a smaller cost of entry for um the nbl being a sponsorship for mg than it would be going straight into afl yeah yep. still a, a really a really clever play in my view uh, of if you've got the dough and you want to build that brand awareness and you've got a whole lot of other tactical things to underpin yeah campaign i think it's uh, i think it's clever sponsorship You've got to be. You've got to be able to join the dots. You've got to, the, the, the customer's got to be able to join the dots between Jordan to go his shorts, and you know, downloading the app and using it. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know. But I do like the. You know, it's just it's just media. It's just another media channel. It's just yeah. another way of building awareness, and it's a constant balance between: is this doing our brand any? good or is is there a positive or negative effect on our brand based on the behavior of the people that we've and the teams that we're sponsoring yeah that becomes a personal decision and it's a line that you figure out where you want to draw but yeah. you know that come back to jd that other point you know obviously the famous the everyone jumping off lance armstrong when he got busted and tiger woods when he put the uh, when uh, aaron put the the ellen or aaron put the golf club through yeah. the window yeah yeah when he got in the whole bunch, bunch, bunch I think of I think he called it an indiscretion. <laughs> an indiscretion or two, allegedly. Or, or two or whatever. <laughs> but ultimately, I think it comes back to, is any publicity good publicity when you're, when you're sponsoring talent? Like if, for example, you know, an incident happens with an athlete and they get caught doing something untoward, does that still connect your brand to them and cause problems or is it more like okay well it's we're still getting more publicity than we would normally anyway but i guess that's what you were trying to say before when you're looking at that in relative terms of connecting your brand to a human they're definitely fallible there's things that can go wrong well no, absolutely but i think for some i think for some marketing um uh departments and some marketing managers and some uh client organizations I think it's just a, it's a vanilla decision. It's like, we're just going to do this. Why? Because the managing director likes football or, you know, because the CEO likes horse racing, whatever. Yeah. And so, and that's where the sponsorship money comes in because they get, you know, special treatment. And goes with the sponsorship, you know, a box at the G because they're, yeah. they're sticking um, their name up on the, on the, or, uh, on the ticket. Or, tape. You, or you sponsor someone in the hope that they're going to do something incredibly stupid. And you can associate, you can have your brand associated with them, which is a far braver move when you when you tie your your some of your brand attributes to behaviours of specific athletes. And it's especially brave when you know those athletes are going to do something that is going to turn 95% of the population against them. And you're going to be able to stand proudly by their side and go, I'm with this idiot, you know? Like... <laughs> Uh, yes, but then the flip side of that is when that idiot does something fantastic and all of a yeah. sudden he's in, you know, Nike, Adidas, yeah. John Douglas, Jack Daniel, whatever, all over them, all of a sudden you're like, holy yeah. crap, we're getting a whole bunch more media time. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's really that elevation of your brand relative to the celebrity. You know, a million followers on Instagram, one post about whatever, all of a sudden so much more reach. You know, you amplify stuff really, really quickly. But... Um, JD, a great find to pick over today. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We could talk well, sports for hours, you and I. We could, we could, we could, and we got we uh, we avoided any high horses. We may have got on one at the start, but we got off that pretty pretty quick. We did. I think we were okay. I think we kind of tickled it a little with the cricket. But have you got a parting thought for us? I just uh, I just think that the the golden rule is 
if you're going to sponsor someone, make sure that their values or their behaviours align with your, with how you want to be seen. And therefore, whatever they do is going to rub off on you in the right way. Yeah. Because anything else is going to be, you're choosing it because it's lazy, you're choosing it because everyone else is doing it and it'll just, it'll backfire on you faster than a 1964 Fiat. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's another edition of the Bones of Advertising. We'll leave it on that backfire note, JD. Thank you again, and I'll see you next week. You will indeed. Thank you, mate. Nice to see you. You too.